Hello everyone, and welcome back to Steins Gate. I'm G, and we haven't been here for a while. Last we saw uh, of this whole situation, um, we were trying to save Ferris's father from death, because that is what her D-mail had changed in the past. I think it was like 10 years ago, something like that. But either way, we went through that timeline, and we went into, I think it was a negative timeline? I forget. The divergence meter was missing the first digit. Either way, we have now rewound to a previous save state, and we are now at a point where we can um, continue on. And I'm sorry, Ferris. I lied to you. Oh, that's the wrong... There we go. JK on Ransom. Love you, Papa. See you soon. Send. Sending mail. 0.456914! Chapter 8. Fractal Androgynous. Dun dun dun! My head spins. I feel faint. Slowly, the world reasserts itself. I have teleported to the lab development room. Ferris is standing next to me. Reading Steiner is telling me that the world line has changed. Additionally, the injuries the viral attackers inflicted on my body have vanished. So has the pain. Ferris is standing in the center of the room, looking around. The tears that were in her eyes just a moment ago are gone. Yo, Ma! Do you know where Ferris's phone went, yeah? Just a moment ago, Ferris was fighting to hold back her tears, but that Ferris is no more. In her place is the usual cute, cheerful Ferris, with an impish smile on her face. I look at the phone in my hand. It's not my phone, but one with several cute, girly cat doll phone straps attached. Here's your phone. Yeah. Ferris walks up to me with a teasing smile on her face. She pokes at my fingers with her index finger. Yo, Ma, did you see what was inside in ya? Ferris gently takes her phone from my hand. If you did see it, then please forget about it, Nya. Can't let that cat out of the bag, Nya, or else they will awaken, Nya. Come on, Kyoma, you're supposed to say something, Nya. Like, who the hell are they or something, Nya? I'm sorry. Before we sent the email, Ferris said she didn't want to forget. And I lied that she would surely remember. Kyoma's acting weird, nya. You usually act all pompous and nya. I embrace Ferris suddenly, pulling her to me as tightly as I can. I'm sorry. Ferris remembers nothing. Nothing about her victory at the Rhinette tournament. Nothing about our escape from the viral attackers. Nothing about her father riding up in his limousine to save her. Nothing about how we talked alone in her bedroom. Nothing. She remembers nothing. Everything that happened on that world line was undone. What happens to that world line, I don't know. Maybe, like Suzaha said, it still exists as another possible world line. Or maybe it ceased to exist the moment I sent the email. You'd have to be a god to observe each and every world line, so it's pointless to worry about it. But one thing is clear. I can never return to that world line again. Ferris can never see her father again. Kyoma, th this is really bold of you, Nya. Maybe she's in the next room. She'll find out, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. The only thing I can do is apologize. On this world line, Mayuri invited Ferris to come hang out at the lab. Apparently, she came to see a costume Mayuri had made. Ferris has work after this, so she soon leaves the lab. Let's see what that is! It's from Mayuri! Uh, they had a fight. Kaede-chan had a fight with her boyfriend. How do I get them to make up? Mayushi's never had a fight with anyone, and I think it's mysterious. I couldn't fight with the person I like. Kaede-chan. Um, who is that again? Oh, was she a cosplay buddy? Fight. That's because you're a gentle girl, Mayuri. Mysterious. 
Yes, it is mysterious. Why are people so cruel to each other? Since when do you have someone you like? I figured you put food before romance, lol. That's mean! Um... That's because you were a gentle girl. Or why are people so cruel to each other? Um... I'm really curious about the, like, what'll happen if I choose the why are people so cruel to each other thing. But at the same time, like, just saying, like, hey, Mary, Mary, you're good. Um, hmm. Nah. After a month away, I want to be sweet to Mary. Mail sent. Okay. Okay. After seeing Ferris off, I head towards Yanabayashi Shrine. On the way, I stop at Chuodori and take a look around. They're back. The Moe stores exist again. Animate, Toranoana, Mandarake, Gamers, Lamtara, Melon Books, Asobat City. They've all returned to the streets of Akiba. There's a gigantic anime-themed banner hanging from the softmap building. Maids walk the street handing out leaflets. Cosplaying girls advertise in storefronts. But the return of this familiar scenery brings no relief to my heart. There is only pain, for everything I see confirms that Ferris has lost her father. But I can't stop here. I shake my head and hurry to the shrine. On the way, I notice that the satellite is missing from Radikan's rooftop. Of course it is. Suzuha is gone. The thought brings a new pang of grief to my heart. Before this is over, how much more pain will I shoulder? I pass beneath the archway and enter the silent courtyard. I walk up to the main building and jab the intercom. After a few presses, I get a reply. Yes, who is... Ah, Okabe-san. Rukako comes out. Girly as always, even though he's a guy. No, wait. This Rukako is a genuine girl. Rukako... Someone should have donated an old computer to the shrine several years ago. Can you ask your dad about it for me? An old computer? Hmm? I think Kukuko went pale when I mentioned the computer. She lowers her face immediately, so I can't be certain. Um, I'll go call my dad. Rukuko hurries inside. It looks like she knows something. Rukuko's dad soon appears. Well, if it isn't ho kun Thank you for taking care of my daughter. I rush the greeting and get down to business. If I'm not mistaken, there was an old computer donated to the shrine about ten years ago. Do you know about it? An old computer? Why, yes, I do remember that. Really? Yes, finally! I've returned to the world line with the IBM 5100! Please, I need to see it! Sure, please wait here. Ruka's dad heads inside the sanctuary in the back. Rukako has been silent this whole time. She keeps touching her hair and looking around nervously. Something is definitely wrong with her. Are you afraid of me, Rukako? Eh? I understand. I mean, I, uh, touched your, uh, naughty bits, I guess. Oh, that part we cut out! Don't talk about that! Crap, I just made things more awkward. Yeah, don't... Don't molest people. Jeez. I didn't have to say it like that. I'm not afraid of you, Okabe-san. That was really embarrassing, though. Sorry. Okay. By the way, do you know about the IBM 5100? No! Yukiko shakes her head in an unnatural way. I've never heard of it. But when I called you before, it sounded like you knew about it. No, I... Yukiko is looking more and more uncomfortable. Maybe I'm pushing her too hard. I should back off. I did a terrible thing to this girl. So it might be best if I stop treating her as my disciple. I need to treat her like a lady from now on. 
If I don't, I could get sued for sexual harassment or charged with attempted rape or indecency or something. How about... How about you just... Don't... Just do the thing to be respectful of the person and not because you want to not be sued? <sighs> Anyways. But how exactly do I treat her like a lady anyway? I just treat everyone the same, pretty much. So, uh, you're not gonna wear the costume my earring made? Oh, no. Because it's embarrassing? Yes. Why is this girl so lacking in confidence? I guess you can't help it if it's in her nature. But didn't she say her reason for becoming a girl was to gain confidence in the first place? And yet, she's a girl now, but she still seems the same inside. That's strange. Ruka's dad returns. His timing is good. My conversation with Rukako wasn't going anywhere. Did you find it? I try asking just in case, but he looks confused. Obviously, something unexpected has happened. Well, I couldn't find it. You couldn't find it? I remember receiving an old computer, but it's not in the storehouse anymore. The IBM 5100 isn't here? I press my hands to my temples and stifle a groan. The world line is still twisted. The IBM 5100 is like a mirage floating in front of me. I can see it, but never reach it. Pardon my asking, but the PC was donated by Akiha Rumiho-san, correct? Huh? How did you know? Did you know her by chance? We're friends. Rumio-chan has grown up to be a splendid young lady, hasn't she? It was when she was still in elementary school. She came to visit with her butler, Kuroki-san. But why did that computer disappear? I thought someone might have stolen it, but everything else was untouched, and the lock wasn't broken. This contradicts Rukako's, Rukako's statement. Rukako said she didn't know about the IBM 5100. Ruka, do you know anything about it? You've been cleaning the sanctuary the past few years, haven't you? Once again, Rukako hangs her head, almost shaking with fear. Her hands are trembling. Rukako, what's wrong? I try asking again. But she doesn't raise her head. I don't know anything. The look on her face betrays her. Rukako is lying. But why? Remember, she shouldn't even know about the IBM 5100. Why does she know? Because the world line changed, there's no other answer. Her D-mail must be the cause. In Ferris's case, I didn't know what her D-mail was about. But in Rukako's case, I already know what it is. I want to be a girl. The D-mail must have had influence beyond Ruk Rukako's sex, the butterfly effect. It somehow changed the location of the IBM 5100. It was like that with Suzuha, and with Ferris. I can't help but think that the universe itself is keeping the IBM 5100 away from me. At any rate, when Nukako sent her D-mail, reading Steiner activated, meaning the D-mail changed the world line. If the IBM 5100 won't return to me on this world line, then my next step is to cancel Rukako's D-mail. In other words, I need to turn Rukako back into a guy. Suddenly, I feel dizzy. It's not Heastroke, and it's not reading Steiner. How am I going to explain this to Rukako herself? Just the other day, when I called Rukako a guy, she cried. Then Kurusu and Mayuri ganged up on me. Can I get Rukako to go back to being a guy without stirring up trouble? This is going to be tough. Maybe I should consult someone about this. At first, I considered consulting Kurusu, but I don't think I should talk to a girl this time. Let's think a little. I visit Tenoji's house. The divergence meter is here. I need to know what it says. Cancelling Ferris's email appears to have raised the value by about 0.05%. Little by little, I'm approaching the goal of 1% divergence. The number gives me courage. Afterwards, Tenoji recounts his memories of Hashida Suzu, just as he did on a previous world line. I stay until he's finished.
It's past 6 p.m. when I get back to the lab. Doo -doo -doo. Welcome back again! There are two girls in the lab, Mayuri and Kurisu. Who is this Kareem? Well, welcome back feels so well into Hokarine, doesn't it? When you put them together, it's doubly delicious! It's not delicious. It's a greeting I can only use for Ocarine, so why not? <laughs> Where's Daru? Hmm, probably at May Queen? May Queen. So that's back too. So when Ferris said she had work, she meant at May Queen. What about you, Mayuri? You work there too, don't you? Of course I do! You know that, Ocarine! You're so weird! Maybe she's taking a break to prepare for Komima tomorrow. Timeline has been corrected, it seems. At least in part. I should stop by May Queen when I have time. I'll visit sometime when Mayuri and Ferris are working. I didn't realize it until it was gone, but I think I really like that main cafe. Curse who's reading a western book. It's the same book as always. It's pretty hefty, so it must take a long time to read. I walk past her and enter the development room. There sits the time leap machine. Today is Saturday, the 14th of August. The first time Mayuri died it happened on Friday the 13th. After Suzuha's sacrifice changed the world line, Mayuri died on the 14th instead. Her death was delayed 24 hours exactly. If that pattern continues, her death on this world line should occur tomorrow, the 15th. Just to be safe, I should buy a few days with the time leap machine. I'll need time to solve the Rukako problem. I should time leap right away. Just before entering the lab, I peeked into the brown tube workshop. The 42-inch CRT was on, so there's no problem there. Still. Ooh, I can... Call someone? What? Uh, hello? Who, who do I call? Ghostbusters. Inbox. Nothing. I don't know who I would call. I'm gonna be honest. Will Mayuri really die on the 15th? Ooh, wait. I need to check something. I need to see if this is a turning point. One second. Alrighty, so it turns out this is not the big chapter divergence, so I'm just gonna go with what my gut's telling me. I don't have solid proof. Maybe there is no pattern and it's just in my head. Maybe Mayuri dies today. Maybe she dies tomorrow. What I want more than anything is for that never to happen. What happens to Mayuri on this world line? I mustn't let my guard down, not until the IBN 5100 is back in my possession. At the same time, however, I want to know what happens to Mayuri on this world line. There's still a chance, however small, that she won't die. No, don't hesitate! Hesitation could lead to an irreparable mistake. I don't want to see Mayuri die again, to see the light fade from her eyes. It's too painful. So I won't confirm Mayuri's death. I don't want to. All I can do is assume the worst. Retrieving the IBN 5100 is the only sure way to prevent her death. I must not rest until then. I need to time leap now. I can always time leap later. I put away my phone and take a deep breath. I don't want to sacrifice anyone else. I know it's unreasonable, but I want to hope that nothing will happen on this world line. A foolish dream, perhaps, but still. Nothing happens on the 14th. Moika's group doesn't appear at the lab, and Mayuri doesn't get involved in any accidents. So far, so good. The problem is tomorrow. The time is 7.30pm. My preparations are complete. The time leap machine is set, mode snake is primed, and the remote control for the TV downstairs is ready. It's all second nature to me now. Komima started today, so Mayuri's been in Ariake since this morning. I told Daru not to come to the lab today, but to keep an eye on Mayuri instead. So even if Moika's group shows up here, they have a low chance of killing Mayuri. Will the rounders come on this world line? We'll soon find out. 7.35. The door isn't kicked open. Instead, my phone rings. It's Daru. Hello, Daru? <sighs> 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 Something's wrong. 
Hey, what happened? Daru? So, some guys came out of nowhere. They took my Yushi. I think they wanted me. I ran, but my Yushi. What do I do, Okarin? It's the Rounders. They kidnapped her. And then they probably killed her. To them, my area is expendable. I grind my teeth in frustration. It didn't work. I still have never read Mayuri's death. I toss Mode Snake onto the couch. The preparations were a waste. Mayuri died somewhere else. I hang up and walk to the development room. I won't let you kill Mayuri! And so once more, I send my memories to the past. An unpleasant sound pierces my ears. My vision ripples, my flesh and my soul momentarily feel separate. I grab my right wrist, I close my eyes, take deep breaths, and wait for my pulse to return to normal. Whew. The worst is over. All that's left is a headache. Now I have my answer. My eerie's death is still fixed, just as in my heart I knew it would be. The change merely delayed it by another 24 hours. I need to cancel Tukoko's email. I sit down in a pipe chair and try to come up with a plan. Nothing. I've been searching for a way to tell Rukako the truth, but every mental simulation I run ends with her in tears. I suppose that's to be expected. After all, I've already seen it happen once. I mistook Rukako for a guy and she ended up in tears. I mean, Rukako cries at just about anything. To broach the topic now would be like poking an open wound. Damn, it looks like I have no choice but to ask Kurusu. She's a girl, so she should understand how Rukuko feels. I called Kurusu out to the bench in front of the brown tube workshop. We're alone. This seems serious. Yes, I have a difficult problem that requires delicacy to resolve. Delicacy? That's like the exact opposite of what anyone expects from you. That's why I want to ask a girl. Plus, you're my assistant, so I need you to save my ass this instant. Oh, you... Why do you need to ask a girl anyway? And give her the rundown, including how many times I've time-leaped, and what happened with Suzuha and Ferris. How many times have I explained this to her now? This time, she believes me more readily than I expected. The only thing she doesn't believe is the story about Rukuko. Hiroshibara san is actually a guy? That's totally ridiculous. But it's the truth. It was the truth. So basically, um. She wrinkles her brow in thought. She looked like Hashida? Crap, I got a mental image there for a second. Judging by her expression, so did Kurusu. <sighs> we grimace. Unacceptable! There's no way such a cute girl was a guy! Hey, hold your horses. I never said that Rukako looked like a guy. He actually looked pretty much the same. He was always androgynous, so much you couldn't help but think he was secreting excess female hormones or something. As a result, I didn't even notice when Rukako became a girl at first, and made a fatal mistake. Looks like she does now? Curse's gaze wanders for a bit. Acceptable. What? Anyway, you want to turn her back into a guy? Unless we do, Mayuri dies. Mayuri's life is tied to Rushibara's son's gender. That's so crazy it doesn't seem real at all. Have you come up with a solution? Of course. I'll have Rukuko turn back into a guy. I don't know if she's going to appreciate that. That's why I'm consulting you, so I can find a way to do this while hurting her the least. I take a mouthful of Dr. P in a vain attempt to quiet my frustration. 
If only I hadn't been so careless. I shouldn't have let so many people send emails. This is my punishment. I must shoulder the pain of everyone who used a email. Suzuha, Ferris, and Erukako. Regret won't change anything. There's only one piece of advice I can give. Christina sighs, blowing her bangs. Don't say anything to Rushibara-san. What do you mean? Based on what you've told me, you have the advantage this time. You already know the contents of the D-mail. So you don't have to tell her. Him? X him? You don't have to tell her Rushibara-san. Just send the cancellation D-mail. You mean pose as Rukako and send the mail to her mother myself? If the world line changes, then that will all be undone. In which case, ethical concerns don't really matter. The end justifies the means. A philosophy worthy of a scientist. Just one problem. I don't know her mother's pager number. What? Are you an idiot? Why didn't you write it down? I didn't think I would need it. Kurisu clicks her tongue. She rubs her brow with her fingers while muttering and thinking. Why don't you just ask for the pager number directly? Think up a good excuse. That's going to look suspicious. What are you so scared of? That's not the vain and arrogant Okabe I know. Vain and arrogant? That was uncalled for. I don't have time to be Hoween Kyoma now. Just make up some nonsense like you always do. I mean, you know how gullible she is, right? Wow, I hate myself for saying that. I'm a bad girl. Kurisu hangs her head. Maybe I should just tell her the truth. Sincerity will work better than underhanded, underhanded tricks, I think. A mad scientist sincere? That's a good one. It's more like you to say, I'll brainwash her! Mwahaha! I'm being serious, damn it. I will shoulder Rukako's pain. That's my responsibility. When I cancel that D-mail, the fact that she was a girl will be undone. I'm the only one who can carry that burden. So what are you tech Yeah. So what are you talking to me for? Go to her now and tell her what you told me. Yeah, you're right. That's my only choice. As always, there are only a few worshippers at the shrine. I guess that's how it can keep its dignified silence, even though it's less than a ten minute walk from Akihabara Station. Ah, Okabe-san. Rukako is sweeping the courtyard. I, I'm sorry, I left Samadara in my room. No, that's okay. R really Well, crap. Now that we're face to face, I can't bring myself to tell her the truth. Is something wrong? Well... I recall Rukako's crying face. She looked very sad when I called her a guy. If possible, I don't want to make her cry again. No, why am I acting so weak? I can't stop here. I swore I would do anything to save Mayuri. And when Rukako said he wanted to be a girl, he probably only said it out of curiosity. If I explain everything properly, I doubt she'll refuse to become a guy again. Rukako! Uh, yes? I grab her by the shoulders and pull her close. Rukako's cheeks instantly turn bright red. Please listen carefully. The truth is... You used to be a guy. No reaction. Or so I thought. Then tears start welling up in Rukako's eyes. You're saying that again? Damn, I made her cry again. But this time I don't back down. Listen, unless you turn back into a guy, my Yuri will die. Eh. I explain everything. About time travel. About the D-mail Rukako sent. About my Yuri's fate. About how to avoid it. I talk and talk without pausing for breath. Finally, I'm done. You're joking, right? Her voice is trembling. I, I can't believe any of it. This is more role-playing, right? You're being Kyoma-san, right? Right? She backs away from me, shaking her head. 
I don't like that backstory. It hurts, and I think it would hurt my Yuri chan too. I know you're confused hearing this so suddenly, but it's all true. I've witnessed her death countless times. I'm sorry, I know I'm being selfish, but I'm begging you. To save Mayuri, I need you to become a guy again. Please tell me you're joking, Okabe-san. I can't possibly be a guy. I don't want to be. I've always been a girl ever since I was born. This is cruel. And why do I have to hear it from you of all people? I'm so embarrassed. This isn't right. Ukako covers her face with both hands to snuff out her sobs. What's to be embarrassed about? I have a hard time thinking of you as a girl anyway. Ukako jerks like someone poked her with a cattle prod. Her crying has stopped. Um... What did I do? That's how... You... Of me... What? I couldn't hear you. She lowers her hands and looks at me. Then she smiles, a soft, sorrowful smile. So that's how you think of me. Then, Rukuko shakes off my hands and runs away. Rukuko, wait! She doesn't stop even when I call her. She disappears into the shrine office. It turned out just as my mental simulations predicted. I sigh and leave the shrine, dejected. I need to come up with a plan. When I get back to the lab, I take Kurusu out to the bench and explain what happened. Kurusu listens with an annoyed expression the whole time. When I finish, she glares at me and says, He raised a flag! What are you talking about? Don't you get it? You raised a flag! Or I guess you could say you tripped over a flag that was already raised. You mean a death flag? Why? It's a romance flag, genius! What? A romance flag? Urshibara-san likes you! Kurusu thrust her finger at me. When her beloved Hoween Kyoma told her she was a guy, it tore her pure maidenly heart into tiny little pieces. In other words, your plan was a massive failure. She sure is calm when it's my neck on the line. Love is trouble. There's no formula for calculating people's feelings. Too many unknowns to solve for. She shakes her head like she can't imagine anything worse. Has this girl never been in love? The direct approach was a mistake. It will be even harder to persuade her now. You should think of another way this time, like asking her mother directly. But I'm sure the Rushibara family already thinks of you as the man who made, her th who made their daughter cry, so they might have their guard up. Rukuko likes me? I don't want to believe it. I mean, I appreciate the sentiment, but... Um, when do you think I first set off that romance flag? How should I know? I mean, think about it. Rukuko was a guy last week. If he already liked me at that point, then... Uh-oh. That's just your perspective. From everyone else's perspective, she was always a girl. It makes perfect sense. Think in terms of the current world line. Right, it makes perfect sense. Still. Anyway, there's a bigger problem. Will changing Urushibara's son's gender to male really bring the IBM 5100 back? Something is different from the previous world line. According to Rukuko's father, the IBM 5100 was definitely at Yanabayashi Shrine. Suzuha gave it to Ferris's dad. After he died, Ferris donated it to Yanabayashi Shrine. That sequence is the same as on the world line where I obtained the IBM 5100. So you're gradually approaching the original world line. You know, I've been thinking. You really shouldn't be able to change the world line so easily. What makes you say that? I mean, there are six billion people in the world. It doesn't make sense that switching a single person's gender could cause such a huge change in the world line. According to Suzuha, taking different actions after a time leap will only change divergence by around 0.000001%, if at all. But when I cancelled Ferris's D-mail, there was a 0.05% change. 0.05% is pretty big. 
What did Amane-san have to say about that? Good gracious, I'm having such difficulty pronouncing these names. The year 2010 is a major attractor field junction, and the key is whether or not I obtain an IBN 5100. Maybe the divergence meter actually measures your distance to the IBN 5100. In any case, what you're saying is that all of the emails we sent had an influence on the IBN 5100's location somehow. There were also some emails that didn't activate reading Steiner. Hmm, so just cancel the emails that activated reading Steiner, and the IBN 5100 might come back to you. The remaining emails were sent by Rukiko and... Kiryu Moaka. I don't want to see that woman again if I can help it. In any case, I should focus on Rukiko right now. So what should I do about Rukiko? Just go out with her. Seriously? If there's nobody you like, then there's, then there's no reason not to, is there? Get close and help her work through her feelings. Then she'll probably tell you what you need to know. Mayuri dies in two days. I don't have time for that touchy-feely stuff. Suddenly, Kurusu's expression turns grave. Only consider this as a last resort. If you're willing to hurt Urushibara-san, you can always take the information by force. She'll forget after the ward line changes, won't she? In that case, I think it's a valid option. But only when compared to Mayuri's death. I hate myself for suggesting this. No, you're right. I need to consider every possible option. But I don't want to do that if there's any other choice. I'm not saying this for myself. From my perspective, when the world line changes, everything until that point becomes undone. But what about from Rukuko's perspective? What if this world line continues after I leave it behind? The Rukuko of this world line will have to live with what I did to her. That possibility exists. Suzaha said that's not the case, but there's no way to be sure. And since I can't confirm or deny that possibility, I don't want to use Kurusu's last resort. Besides, I have the Time Leap Machine. And as long as I have it, I can repeat the days before Mayuri's death forever. Of course, there's still the danger of a Time Leap failure. In any case, the first thing I should do is have an honest talk with the girl in question. I hear the tweeting of small birds outside the window. It's nice and cool early in the morning, even though it's the middle of summer. Too bad the cicadas are already chirping. The sunlight's not too strong yet. I couldn't get a wink of sleep. I was up all night thinking about Rukako. Oh, Karine! Oh, there you are! Mairi enters the room and looks at me with a disapproving pout. She didn't say to to do It's rare to see her in such a bad mood. You're early. It's still eight. Something happening today? I'm here to scold you, Karine. She gives me a glare that's more cute than frightening. She's never been very good at getting angry. Why you? She's very disappointed in you. Mayuri, puff Mayuri puffs out her cheeks and thrusts a finger at me. What did I do? You can't fool me, Karine. You made Ruka-chan cry, didn't you? How did you... Ruka-chan told me. She said she, she said you said she was a guy. Damn. Those two are close friends. I should have known Rukako would go to Mayuri first. Why would you say such a mean thing, Okarine? Mayuri, it doesn't involve you. This is a serious confidential matter involving the organization. It does too involve me! Rukachan is Mayushi's friend! If you don't tell me, we're not friends anymore, okay? I'm gonna quit being a lap mem. This is the first time I've ever seen Mayuri so angry. I'm not sure how to deal with this, honestly. Why did you say such a mean thing? I did it to save you. But I can't say that. I don't have it in me to tell this innocent girl that she's fated to die in just two days. Come to think of it, was it a mistake to tell Rukuko about Mayuri's murder? I did make sure to tell Rukuko not to breathe a word of it. You're worried about something, aren't you? She's sharp, even though she never seems to be thinking anything. I can tell. I've been watching you longer than anyone, Okarim. And yesterday you talked with Christian for a long time, didn't you? If something's wrong, you should talk to Mayushi too, okay? 
I want to help too, okay? Now let's go apologize to Ruka-chan. Will you do that for me? Maybe she will come too, so let's... <laughs> okay. Come now, Mayuri. Me? Worry? Don't be ridiculous. I am the insane mad scientist Hoin Kyoma. I have nothing to worry about. All I have is the hunger for chaos. <laughs> okay. I can't tell Mayuri. I can't. Even if Mayuri hates me for it. I've got mail. Okabe. Ooh. Okabe-san, I have something important to talk to you about. Please come to the shrine when you can. I'll be waiting. Please. Something important? What? I told her everything yesterday, including about Mayuri's death. Perhaps, after sleeping on it, she's finally decided to believe my story. Alright. I get up from the sofa. Where are you going? Maybe she's not done talking. I'm going to Rukako's. Really? You're going to apologize? Then let Mayushi come too! No, that will just make it harder. I put my hand on Mayuri's shoulder. Please, take care of the lab while I'm gone. Mayuri's shoulders droop. She looks sad for some reason, but she lets me go. And I think that that is a good place to cut it. God, Okabe is terrible at navigating these sort of situations, and just, jeez. There's just, there's just so much about the Ruka situation that just, Okabe's real bad. It's real bad at. <sighs> but, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes. Seeing how this uh, diverges, ha, diverges. Uh, from what I know of the plot thus far. there, So far. Good gracious, I can't talk tonight. But yeah, thank you all so much for following my playthrough of Steins Gate. It's great to be back. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye now.